indeed they are, but it's always tough when you cross the Nullarbor mm. and uh, head to Paterson Stadium. As I said, West Coast and Port on 5.03, Essendon and St Kilda on 5.04. We're about to head back to the SCG for the second half. It is the Sydney Swans leading by 21 points. Players to lift, particularly mm. from the Dockers. Who do you see, Jono? From the Dockers, it's their runners. It's Mazungu, Pierce and Hill. I think they're the ones who need to lift in the second half. They need to link up, cross half back through the, to the middle of the ground, just so they can get the ball in long and direct to Pavlic to, to give him some one-out uh, contests against Richard. From a Sydney point of view, Buddy and Karen Jack are the two to lift. All right, let's have a look at the second half now. It's a margin of 21 points. Here we go at the SCG. Yeah, as the game goes on. City Swans Premiership captain Barry Hall downstairs, keeping an eye from that level. And, of course, we've got City Swans Brownlow medalist Jared Healy in the box with three-time Premiership star Alistair Lynch. Kick inside 50, crowd calling for a free. Kennedy comes up with the crumb. Shaw, he's had his own footy this afternoon or now this evening. He sure has been able to get plenty of it. He's miskicked a couple, but he's had a lot of them. That was a miskick from the boot of Spur out on the full. Free kick, Brandon Jack. Brought back into the lineup this week, Brandon Jack. First game for 2014. Misread that, Parker. Forced to lay a tackle, an angry man tackle on Clancy Pierce. McGlynn gave it up. McVeigh back to Parker. And now the one on one. Franklin and McFarlane. It works for McGlynn. Got it off shoes. Kicks it along towards goal. Outstanding start, Sydney. Midfield goals. The runoff half back, as you said, Reece Shaw's had a plethora of the ball uh, throughout the course of the game so far. Uh, but the runoff half back, you see a wave of Swans players coming through. Again, not bombing the ball forward, goes to a contest where Buddy is, spills to the uh, ground, and that energy of Ben McGlynn, the work rate to get to the, the drop of the ball and finish his fine work. Just some worrying signs for the Fremantle Dockers. And most of the worrying signs for the Fremantle Dockers are that the Sydney Swans are up and going. They're in, right into this contest and the polish is just starting to complement the work rate. Well, the Dockers responded uh, after a really poor showing against Hawthorne with a uh, super performance last week. But right now they need a similar response because they are getting really badly beaten at contested ball. Malcheski rolls one forward. Duffield buffered it out of it. Kennedy. Good release handball to Shaw, and now the overlap cut off beautifully. Johnson, Fife, Great line. beats Rampy, turned his back into Rampy. Now Johnson can go all the way home. He was the man last year to get them back into it. He might do likewise tonight. Well, against the flow of the play, the Swans had their whole midfield and whole back line charging to one end of the ground, and uh, big Aaron Sandland's got the mitts in the way of a handball. It was a superb intercept and turnover. Here it is. He sure just uh, misinterpreting, or was it uh, Johnson? It Johnson. was, in fact, Johnson. And he followed up. That was a brilliant mark from five. Followed up on the end of a handball and delivered. It's coming out of you guys. Great work from Michael Johnson. It wasn't a great kick to Nate Fife, but he did the work to take a fantastic mark. mark. But he followed it up, and the All-Australian defender from 2013 just finished with a nice shot at goal. Desperately needed. Back in the middle. Sandlins and Derricks. Sandlins flicks it down, hoping for Mundy. Well read by Bird to Kennedy. Buffered it out of it, Rampy, but he gets the kick away to half forward. Bounced on its end. Jack. Hanabry. Open side, Rampy again. Drives it to Franklin. Got it. That's better from Buddy Franklin. Get in front and keep going. Now, he had to slightly hold his lead because the kick wasn't super. It was uh, straight, but it, we would have liked a 10 foot metres further out in front of him. Absolutely. It was still the foot dart at the leading target. And they've obviously they've changed the way they've approached the forward 50 entries. And Buddy, on that occasion, has uh, been the beneficiary with a really good mark. Just, uh, this one is that nerve-wracking distance. <laughs> Goalless last week against North Melbourne here in his first game at the SCG. For his first goal of many, the crowd hope here. And they rise. The $10 million man. He's, uh, 
getting in the face of Luke McFarlane as well after flushing that one through. And uh, it's been a great contest. We see uh, Hanabry in there as well. A bit of uh, emotion spilling over here. Uh, no one wants to give away a silly free kick, that's for sure. But Buddy's on the scoreboard and his teammates are pretty happy as well. I reckon that was like uh, Greg Chappell getting off the mark when he had those seven ducks in a row. <laughs> then trash talking Michael Holding. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever trash talked Michael Holding. Oh, was it Andy Roberts? Well, either of them. Joel Garner? Yeah, you just kept your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe Colin Croft. Back in the middle, good contest here. Skull for goal to start this third term after some lean patches in the opening half. Fife, he needs to get motoring. Gives it back to Spur. Two swans down in the middle. Taking a long time to get up. Mm. Don't need that after a bag of one. There's a couple of Swans players down in the middle of the ground, very slow to get up. One being Jetta. I think they might have clashed heads and both are bleeding. So they might have a double blood rule. Tommy Derricks going from the ground with the blood rule. Just looking across the dock as their forward line not functioning at the present time. We'll see the head clash come forward here. Oh, yeah. And that was a serious clash. Derricks will be going from the ground. I think uh, the Jetta will stay. But Chris Maines, the player who's had a slowish start to the season, missed last week, as we know, back into the side today. And he just hasn't been able to find the footy right now. So given that Rampy's on him, he's got a lockdown on Rampy at the same time. But uh, he's a player that... He's known for his tackling, Dwayne. He's known for his uh, accuracy with his goal kicking. But uh, right now, I think he needs to rebuild his form on the on the former. Holding Stephen Hill. Holding free Stephen off Hill. the ball. Hill to collect it. For the record, Sydney's sub today, Jake Lloyd, a first gamer. So Fremantle have more experience with their sub, Nick Subin. Long drive inside 50 to Pav. Lace out from Hill. Magnificent. Teddy Richards wasn't overly happy with his uh, fellow defenders and getting in that space, but uh, very difficult to do anything about that. Great pass off the wing. Fluent ball movement. Hill hit a really nice 45 metre low one. They need their captain again here, as they so often do. To the booze. That won't bother him. Crosses the 50, strikes it well. It drifts. And near behind. And Tommy Derrick, boys, he's gone down to get his, his eye stitched up. He, I shouldn't expect him too far away, but he's getting his eye stitched. He could be the man they sub out anyway to bring on the smaller. Jake Lloyd will keep an eye on that straight through Jetta's legs. It might work. Brandon Jack goes to ground. Clancy Pierce to Crowley, who hasn't had a lot of it either. Neil all the way back. Johnson, good half volley. Sutcliffe. We've got a runner inside. Fife didn't want to go inside. Now he does. Duffield. Mundy's still waiting for it. Fife ignores him again and turns it over. Kennedy, no one to go too long. Only had short options. McVeigh, Hanabry, he gets his moment. Over kick, cooks the kick. Spur. Tried to get it to Sutcliffe. Lewis Roberts Thompson wrapped up, dragged down. Again, a hard, tough contest, and the umpire will need to sort it out for the ball up. He's in, in two minds, Hanabry, with that kick. He didn't know whether to go with the low dart or just have a shot at goal. I think he, you fit, attack that 50-metre arc, it's goals. Goals, it's uh, the jury. Lewis Roberts Thompson was ridden by Dawson, and the umpire said that he dragged Dawson to the ground on his back, not vice versa. Guys coming in the back here, please. Check that meter. Sandlins tried to head to the boundary. Mundy, uh oh. Now Chesky, stand start. He blows it. Thank you. Thank you. McFarlane chips it wide to Crowley. And he takes it to the line. That'll do. And reset for a ball in. No other options. And John Longmire on screen. He's been in the press a little this week. Some articles in the Sydney Morning Herald this week suggesting that Sydney lose today. There could even be talk about his coaching job tenure. Oh, big call that. A bit that. harsh, yeah, absolutely. And some of the writers today said that's rubbish, but they might discuss Franklin if he doesn't fire. To half forward. Clark can't get near it. Layla caught. Grundy, little fumble. 
jumped on. Ball up. It'll be a fall from Grosh given he got an extension of two years about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was, I think it's the Sydney Morning Herald chief sports writer and Peter Fitzsimons were discussing it. Peter Fitzsimons in the paper today added to it, saying it's rubbish. Valentine towards full forward. But when you say it's rubbish that they should be thinking of sacking the coach, you're still actually talking about the coach and the tenure. Rampy. And there he is, John Lomar on screen. A Sydney Premiership coach, of course. In just his second season at the helm. Franklin, one-on-one. -on -one. McFarlane, good strength. And just threw him out of it. Johnson left it behind. Oh, Zach Kennedy Dawson. jumped on. Dawson lucky to get out of it. Got out of it with a possession to McFarlane. The spin. Kennedy misses to the near side. They have to hammer down right now, Sydney. He's putting a pretty good game together, uh, Joe Kennedy, at the present time. Wasn't overly great last week, but he's responding. Yeah, 23 disposal, obviously kicked the one goal. Clark wide, Pavlich on the run, Richards didn't take the ball but took Pavlich and that was a win in itself. <laughs> Interested in your thoughts on Buddy Franklin at the bottom, but the ball's 150 metres away, but he keeps on sucking himself up here midway to the forward 50. Given athleticism is his great advantage, you'd reckon he'd be better off just holding his ground in the square. Well, yeah, I think he, he looks like he's more comfortable getting up the ground and trying to turn McFarlane around. He's not comfortable in the one-on-one -on -one contest against McFarlane. I think he's, he's almost conceded that at the moment, that he doesn't want the ball to put on top of his head, so he's going to charge up the field and try to turn him around, and that's probably the case in point you were talking about. He slows late on his lead mm. to hopefully get inside, and then get behind McFarlane and head back towards goal. What he needs to do, Lynch, he's actually put a bit more work into the first five metres of his lead, try yep. and get off McFarlane, because McFarlane's got really good closing speed. Pavlich, slick play onto advantage from a free kick. The Pav... Doesn't like his chances, now he does like them. Now he's told to move it on. He's had his 30. A quick 30. Gee, that's amazing. To the top of the square, Mazungu. That also was amazing that he was able to take an uncontested chess mark. I think everyone was a bit, a bit confused, including the umpire, as to whether Pav yeah. could go back and after taking 15 or 20 seconds, then declare he was going to have a shot at goal. Yeah, um, now I think this, this kick long and for Mazungu to take a... A mark there on his chest. I mean, that's up there with that, that catch he took in the big bash yeah. at the Wacker. Very nice catch. This one's a bit easier. The steal back some momentum. Halfway through this third term. Drives it towards goal and breathes some life into Fremantle's attack. Well, it's good conversion. They've got to convert uh, now if they're going to catch up to the Sydney Swans. Take your opportunities, and that was a pretty good one. Nice little mid-kick from Pav. There's half a dozen players there it could have gone to. Well, that was the thing. As you said, it was a mid-kick. Yeah. It wasn't the 55-metre long one, and Mzungu read it better and reassure on that occasion. Everyone was expecting the long 55-metre shot at goal. Things starting to turn around as far as the disposals are concerned. Fremantle up by half a dozen early stages of this third term, and they're using the ball better by foot. 71% against Sydney, 50%. From the ball up, Fife almost got it away. Did to Mundy, could go all the way home. Shrugs the tackle, has a bounce for two in 30 seconds. He's got it! Well, there's some of the great highlights of uh, the SCG, and that is just a clearance goal like that for Monday. There'll probably be a question mark on how the handball came from Fife to Monday. Let's take a very close look, whether it was a layoff or a handball. Probably still debatable, but there's what a dangerous player this bloke would be if he would played full-time with the SCG. Oh, geez, yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot of the midfielders over the years. Once they take that first receiver, tack the 50-metre arc and just straight through it. And Ross Lyon, not overly happy with some aspect of that, but he'd be very happy with the fact that uh, he kicked the goal. Monday, he had his uh, shorts halfway down around his knees, but still <laughs> strong enough to kick it through. From 28 points down, all of a sudden, 16 points down. And with momentum, big time, back in their favour. Parker, 
Hanabry. Swans try to steal back that momentum. Shaw heads wide to Jetta. Clancy Pierce holds him up. Franklin wants the long bomb. Goal square, one on one. He leads to the pocket. Shot McFarlane right. held him up. Franklin's ball. Forward pocket, Sydney. Well, he's pushing back with his arm. And McFarlane almost reflexly grabbed hold of the arm. He would have had that done to him many times over his near 300 games, Luke McFarlane. So, bad mistake from him. Gives Buddy Franklin an opportunity. Through the, the headlock to start with. <laughs> Possibly a free kick. But there's an obvious hold of the jumper. And uh, on that occasion, Luke McFarlane paid the penalty. Probably an early free kick against Buddy Franklin. But the umpire rarely sees that first one. On the good side for a left footer. And he'll open this angle up with what he calls the natural arc. He doesn't, in fact. Head straight towards goal, and the system works. Franklin's got two. Well, they needed to respond after two quick goals from the Fremantle Dockers, and Buddy's just starting to sneak into the game. He's uh, had his hands on the ball 11 times. He's had the... Uh, few marks as well and there's been a number of these sort of contests on that occasion was the holding free kick but uh, Luke McFarlane doesn't give him any space whatsoever but it was an obvious hold of the jumper but importantly Buddy went back and with that straight run up Dwayne he just slobbed it through it's funny how everything old becomes new again the straight run up might be back in vogue unusual but it was much straighter than he normally does just having a chat to uh, the coach on the phone just reinforcing the way he needs to go about it. I think the coach is just ordering another three or four of those, of those beforehand <laughs> and getting them deep, and I think that's his spot on this ground. There's Mundy with yet another clearance. The clearance leader from 2013, hot again in 2014. Bird to Rampy. Mount Chesky, Kennedy about to be hunted down. Just ducked back. Sold to McKitton. Kick was terrible. Subin has been subbed on, so they've used their sub Fremantle. Subin out there getting a touch. We'll find out who's done for the afternoon shortly. Cunningham. Long kick, wing, Shaw. Splendid pass. It was a great kick and well read by Heath Shaw. Back in board, McLean trying his heart out. Or oh, Reese. Looks like Tabin is the sub. Has been subbed out. Okay, so the big man's gone for a small. Didn't have a massive influence, Tabin, just the three possessions. Short sure pass, sure to Jack. Sanderland's 50 metres off the ball here in the corridor, waiting for the long one. So he pokes to the pocket away from Sanderland's, and it works. Parker, and he does that quite a bit, drops in the hole. Great kick, that was. Yeah. The pull kick again, don't just blaze away to where Aaron Sanderland's was. Had to go towards the boundary line. We'll see Sanderland's in the corridor, and, and it is Parker there by himself in the pocket. Having a good season, Luke Parker. He got the 10 votes from the coaches for memory two weeks ago against Adelaide. He's featured a couple of times. He's been a sharpshooter. He has back-to-back 26-possession -back games leading into this. And the Swans holding strong. Again, great answer. Great use of the ball. And we'll continually talk about the, the long bombs to the goal line and this one here three quarter kick probably 40 meters away from the big defenders and and certainly the the loose ruckman in that defensive 50 from Fremantle's point of view and a really good finish here from the pocket the wind's starting to really drop away now so perfect conditions for footy two in quick succession for Fremantle Super and the response two in quick succession for Sydney Seaman into the middle, you can see on screen. Needs to be watched. He was uh, a big influence last week when he was on the ground. And he adds that extra midfield grunt. And away goes Mundy again <laughs> through the middle. Absolutely. Just missed. Fife with the handball. Fife dragged down. And ball up. Ragdolled into the turf. Nat Fife. And he's got a man hanging off him with every possession. Flick down, Derricks. Gets his own clearance. Now Chesky just knocked it on. Sutcliffe left Jetta, and he left Jetta in space, and he spears that to Franklin. Not play, yes, played. For a second, everybody took a long, deep breath, and Franklin could line up again. 
from just on the 50. Well, again, it came from one of the half-backs for the Swans being released. Yep. It's as bad as I've seen Fremantle control their uh, opposition half-backs. They normally have a, a very good link on them. And Buddy Franklin, well, he would have got one and possibly the free kick as well. For a third. All of a sudden, Franklin's come to life. And this is for the biggest lead of the game. That's big time. Suddenly, Buddy's worth the money. Well, the order was in for three or four, so he's got one. But once again, it's his these half-backs. Reece Shaw has been... Uh, he's had his own footy, and if he hasn't had it, Ramp, he's had it. Mel Chesky's also had plenty of it. And McVeigh's been involved as well. We see Jetta getting involved in the play. He hasn't had a massive day, but usually he gets out in space, so it's important he finds that space. But you're right, half-back is where the... The real reward is coming from the Swans at the moment. Three unanswered goals for the Swans. They just own the football in the last uh, five minutes of play. Mazungu's pushed forward and uh, he's gone to make it a one-on-one -on -one in their forward line as well. Had some bouncing issues in the AFL this year. Not a few of the umpires have had their problems. And Jacob Mollison's had a few today. Third one he's had to recall. Pavlich can't drive his way through, starting in the middle for the ball up. Hand off to Kennedy. Franklin's on the move again. This will be for four. Bumped out of it. Went for the chest mark, strangely enough. Sutcliffe left it behind. Hanabry scoops it up. Jenner straight through the middle of them from the pocket. Misses. They're up and about, though, the Sydney Swans. They are running on top of the ground. There's so much uh, fluency about their play. Ross Lyon clearly has had enough. Had a gutful of uh, the amount of rebound the Swans are generating off half-back. Looks like he's just manned each one of them up. He has to. They've just been able to, as you said, they've been able to free too many players off half-back up. And oh. A big no ball. That's... Uh, you mentioned that with... It wasn't Spur last time you mentioned it, it was Johnson, but this time Spur caught the same disease. And there's a free kick to Ryan Crowley. Okay, so, oh, so it's been reversed gone Kieran Jack. against Kieran Jack. Brandon Jack was involved as well. Johnson has got Ballantyne Long, who hasn't seen it for a while. Gets his skates on, sizes up the big sticks, oh, knows done. this is his moment. He shorts to Mazungu. It travelled eight metres. Back to Ballantyne. Parts the seas again to five. Stand start. This bloke's Teddy up. Richards is everywhere. He can't get away from the ball, actually, Ted. Good to see the run power of Ballantyne, though. He basically went on a uh, journey, had no idea where he was going, but he kept backing himself and he plays like that sometimes it opens up sometimes it closes could have been very costly for the sydney swans that reverse free kick or what was going to be a bounce at the top of the goal square free kick to crowley against uh, kieran jacket it appeared they got away with it in the end barry hall yeah we see buddy Fane kick three goals this quarter but he's angered himself back inside 50 a bit deeper which is exactly what you need to do I spoke about it in the first quarter. You need to anchor yourself back on a short ground like the SCG. He's done that and it's worked beautifully for him. Absolutely. Goal kicking superstar Barry Hall. And after the serve that Baz gave a few of them on the way past this afternoon, uh, Lindsay, you'd be surprised <laughs> if there wasn't a response, particularly LRT. He has lifted. Neil caught high. The whole team's lifted from the very first bounce as far as work rate's concerned. And and certainly their skill execution has been a lot better in recent times. Havlitch calling for it back to the square. It's where the Pav's running. It's got three to beat, though, on the big fist of Smith. Thumps it over the line. And Pav's just giving a few of his teammates a bit of a spray. Just allowing the third up defender. He was looking for a one-on-one -on -one contest. Just didn't get the chance to go one-on-one -on -one where he'd be very comfortable. Corey Enright has been regarded as the best small defender in the game for the past decade for all Australians, but Nick Smith wouldn't be far behind him. He has been a fantastic, consistent player on dangerous small forwards, and again today, he's getting the job done. Hanabry a free for in the back to Malcheski. Parker having influence in his third. 
Gee, he was spun 360, still got the handball away, an enormous amount of time. Spur to Fife. Shrugs the tackle. Crowley. Little fumble, Subin just on. Hasn't found the pace of it yet. Clark tries to get it up. Gang tackled, dragged to the ground, and the trademark swans are back. 35 points to margin. Biggest margin of the game right now. Fremantle came from 27 down last year here to force a draw. Look at that. Need to get their skates on shortly here. Rampy back to Cunningham. Bangs it to the wing, McGlynn. Well, again, they had the extra man across half back. It wasn't the nice, smooth, open run that we've seen throughout the day, but they had the extra one back, so the panicked handball had numbers and support. And this time, Barry, uh, Barry Hall, Buddy Franklin went, got the reverse uh, gear going, and he went back to the goal square. Earlier in the match, he was coming up the ground, as you said. Pierce to oh, Pierce. There's a frac R on the wing. There is to Duffield, and the emergency umpire is out there. That's between LRT and Sutcliffe. In the meantime, ball on the outer side to DeBoer. Got Mazungu short. Needs to be a good kick. It is. Still a ton of time left in this. Fremantle 35 down. Swans have their biggest lead of the game. Great kick. Ballantyne. Johnson. And Johnson, the man who drifted down last year to keep them alive and then had the kick to win the game that Reed marked on the goal line to cause that draw and he drifts down again and has the momentum on his boot. This is for his second for the quarter. Well, LRT at that stage was off the ground. He'd just come on, onto the ground as Johnson started to take off, but he was engaged in a little bit of a stink with a couple of the, the smaller Fremantle players. Smaller, who were, angrier types. They were very angry with him, weren't they? But I think uh, given he's got that premiership medallion, he'd be, uh, win most battles. Just inside the paint, got under it, but it looks okay. Exceptional. He's got two for the quarter. And they need to find a little bit more of that. They run from defence, as we've said on numerous occasions, from uh, halfback for the Sydney Swans, they've had that. An uncontested ball. See, Hayden Ballantyne was in space, uncontested mark, been able to hit the target inside 50 with Johnson drifting down again. Another uncontested mark. Haven't seen enough of that from the Fremantle Dockers, and they're certainly still trailing with uncontested possessions. They need, need to get that run from behind and support. Big five minutes coming up here for the Dockers. They can just uh, slam on two, possibly three goals to uh, give themselves all the momentum. And it's now. They need their big guns, their star players, the Pavlich, the Fife, Mundy, etc., to get hold of this footy and get some score on the board. Sandlin's knocks it down, but straight to Pike. He gets the clearance. The 233, Sutcliffe, Brandon Jack. Brandon Jack wrapped up. He didn't have any prior opportunity, but he did go to ground with it, and the umpire makes him pay. Pierce and Hill are the other two, the, the genuine match winners, the guys that, that can create things when they get the ball in their possession, things start to happen. The, the outside runners, I mean, you, you need to win your share of contested possessions, no doubt about that, but this is where they haven't been able to get that run, find the spare player, Sydney pushing up, putting pressure on the, uh, on the Fremantle defenders, just not allowing him to run and bounce off halfback. McFarlane to Mundy, good hands. And here's Pierce of the Daniel variety. Just got away from McGlynn, who tried to help out with Mundy, but they, they've approached this man on man. It's working at the moment. Long to Sandlin's. Got the reach. Off hands. Fife on the run. He hit it well. Just left it behind. The back heel might work. A little hand up. Open goal. Ballantyne's the man. Crunch. Knocked down beautifully by Bird. Swans on the rebound. McGlynn to Franklin, a one-on-one. -on -one. Brandon Jack and Sutcliffe, rolling ball. Sutcliffe gets there first. Brandon Jack's quick, oh. he's slick, he's clever. He's all class, back in, and magnificent. I'm a big fan of this kid, uh, Lynchy, for this very reason. He's got the pace, pace that the Swans absolutely need. They've lost a couple, Mitchell out, Rowan out. This kid's got genuine pace. Hasn't got a lot of the footy so far, but uh, makes forward, sorry, makes defenders very, very nervous. And uh, Ross won't be happy that that boy went to the ground. 
Uh, spot on, he was just a nervous player and uh, didn't do enough with it, he stuck with. Just had to keep the ball going forward, but the pressure of the pace, as you spoke about, Jared, from Brandon Jack, was enough to make Suckwith panic. Here's the long ball in, out in front of Jack. But it was the... Uh... Major twist, wasn't it? But it came back to that turnover, the kick uh, that was going to Hayden Ballantyne, just a little bit high, made him sit under it. And uh, a good spoil again by Rampy. Fremantle at breaking strain again right now. Three minutes from three-quarter time. Malcheski to Franklin. McFarlane got a fist in the way. Dawson. Back to McFarlane. Back to Dawson. Subin. Someone needs to show some poise here. Oh, Subin is in the middle by himself. DeBoer. Sandlin's oh, well spotted. It. It's a one on three. Fremantle had the three. Sandlin's to Mundy to Daniel Pierce. This looks better. Mains in the pocket. Goes longer. Pavlich, top of the square. Richards, Pavlich, straight through them all. Neil gets a chance. A roller. He went along the deck. And Rampy's there again. Just needed to lift that up. And again, desperation from the defenders. Rampy, very good work. Great one on one contest. Richards to get the ball to ground. Here it is, Rampy dives, just slaps it through. That's snappable through the air from there. Yep. Laidler. Told to go. Two and a half minutes left to three quarter time. McGlynn. Generous 15 metres from the umpire. Kieran Jack, the co captain, holds it up, says, Let's take a breath, boys. Be happy to take this lead in. 34 points at three quarter time. Pike, Sandlins. Sandlins with the fist, Fife just on. Mundy tucked up against the line. And Crowley sees it out. Once again, that interchange being at exactly the right time for Fremantle. Baz? Well, Jared, you said uh, Lewis Roberts Thompson's Queen's like the Queen, turns like the Queen Mary, but geez, he turned around pretty quick with this little scuffle. This is out of character for Lewis Roberts Thompson, so I don't know what happened, but LRT is all fired up down here, boys. Yeah, and that's, uh, he nearly gave a 50-metre penalty away uh, when his man, Michael Johnson, took the mark. Not sure what did upset him, Baz, but you're right, uh, those two blokes from the Dockers are pretty keen to make a point. Well, if anyone would be able to work out what got him upset, Baz, I'm sure you would. <laughs> Ball towards half forward. Hit. Could be something minor, too, from past experiences. Duffield. Crowley, that was touched. So it'll be a ball in. Well, everybody's getting inside everybody else's personal space and yep. face right now. But at the moment, the Swans with their lead are going to have the last laugh. And you just you just sense that the Dockers are going to find something, Lynchy, because they've got a trademark they need to uphold, and that is uh, fight it to the death. And there's a lot of spice in this and plenty of time left. A full quarter and one minute 20 to come. Duffield, Mundy, Fife. Great gang tackle. Back to Mundy. A mark from this will be huge to the square. Pavlich might have been held. Yeah. He was. Against Teddy Richards. He was turned, he turned from the ball and appeared to have the arm around Pav as he faced his direct opponent. That's not overly impressed, but no defender is. Again, the two uh, doing the damage was Mundy and Fife in tandem, getting the ball away from a very congested clearance, getting it forward for Pavlich to do the work. Just needs to complete the deal. The captain. Well and truly within his repertoire, this. And that could be monstrous with 45 seconds to three-quarter time. One more would be really handy for the Fremantle Dockers. Plenty of time for both sides to get a goal, but there's the hand across the neck, as you said, Dwayne. It was there. And despite the... Uh, the locals not happy. The of the locals who wasn't, weren't overly pleased, but it was there for sure. Had the eyes off the ball. Have to be happy with that one just before the end of three-quarter time. And uh, if they could sneak another one, it would be very handy. But uh, they've got back into this game. 
Forward 50 entries in favour, plus four to Fremantle Dockers. See Lewis Roberts Thompson back there as a spare man. Contested possessions heavily in favour oh. of the Dockers. Five to Pavlich is up. Teddy got a fifth on it. Down to Malcheski. Down to 30 seconds and counting. Fremantle have the numbers. Hill's about to chase it down and send them back to attacking 50. Dying stages, third term. Clancy Pierce, crunched by Bird, free kick. Play on to advantage. Daniel Pierce long. Pavlich! Oh. How good is he? Well, they're the danger players. Mundy's been a star in this term with 13 and 5 10, but they need some assistance. Neil's been handy. But if they're to win this, the Dockers, they need Hill and they need Pierce. The two left foot match winners to work in tandem as well, get plenty of the footy and get it forward. There's a siren. That's a genuine contested mark. The kick wasn't great, but uh, great strength in front position. Well, if his last one was monstrous, this could give them so much momentum and enthusiasm at three-quarter time. The comeback's not beyond them. The Pav delivers. Last year, here, Fremantle came from 27 points down in the last quarter to steal a draw. The margin right now is 22. All the momentum Fremantle's way, the last two goals of the third term. The Swans 11-10-76, Fremantle 8-6-54. I wouldn't be going far. is set. Two teams that met in the prelim final last year. Two teams that played a draw here at the SCG last year. They were 35 points up, the Sydney Swans. And Fremantle hit back. Just 22 points the margin at three-quarter time. Franklin, three goals at one end. And the other superstar, Matthew Pavlich, three goals for Fremantle down the other. And everybody here at the SCG licking their lips. Big climax coming up. I think the key to uh, the Sydney Swans is keeping Buddy Franklin close to goal. I don't think he's got the fitness to be charging up and down the ground just at this stage. Uh, and when he had that capacity to rest in between efforts, then he became a more dominant player. I reckon they should just scrounge a Kelly yep. Slater leg rope stick, <laughs> one end on his ankle and the other one on the goalpost and just keep him in that goal square because that's where he's dangerous. No doubt about that. And they haven't got other forward 50 targets where at the other end of the ground, Matthew Pavlich, I mean, he's going to be critical moving forward. Just to, if they can get the ball to him, he's going to be dangerous. And as we saw late there, Teddy Rich has had a fantastic game, but if you keep getting the ball in, Pavlich is going to put you under pressure from a, full, uh, a free kick point of view or a mark like this. And this is an outstanding contested mark under pressure from an All-Australian defender. And more importantly, he goes back and just slots it through to give his chance, uh, give his team a chance at three-quarter time to get back in this contest. There's a number of the key indicators have gone back in favour of the Fremantle Dockers, but they're not getting reward on the scoreboard. Let's head downstairs, their coach, Ross Lyon, with Barry Hall. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Well, a couple of late goals, and you're right in touch with this game. Yeah, look, 15 entries to nine, but we defended really poorly and finally started to hit the scoreboard. So, look, they were too aggressive and hard for us in the first you know, that second quarter. So we wanted to get a bit more positive, winning the ball and um, clearance work. So we did that. We just want to get him in the contest and try and create equal numbers. Similar position last year. Is it all that attack from here? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, we need to get hit the scoreboard. Good luck. Thanks, both. From 27 down in the last quarter, they drew the game here last year, Fremantle. These two teams met twice last year for a Fremantle win in the prelim final and for a Fremantle moral victory here at the SCG. And this is huge for the Sydney Swans. They could be 16th on the AFL ladder if they lose this one at the end of this round. And their season could be just about done. Franklin, beaten for it by Duffield, feeds it back to Johnson. Heads wide, Crowley on the run with Jack. That's been a good battle all afternoon. Hits the deck. Ball in. We heard Ross Lyon talk about the 15 to 9 inside forward 50 entries. We spoke at half time about the discrepancies of disposals inside 50s. They've all gone in favour of Fremantle. They were tw plus 20 in disposals, plus 6 inside 50s. Handball receives plus 7 and contested possessions plus 14. So 
most of the game has gone their way, but just not the effective kicks inside 50. Fife long. Pavlich can't get a run out. It almost marked it anyway. Malczewski handball smothered by Ballantyne, who hasses his way towards it. Grundy, Malczewski, Smith. And he heads wide. The first gamer is on. Jake Lloyd. What a moment for him. First touch in AFL footy. And he just measured the pass nicely enough for Malczewski. It's just an effective kick. Brandon Jack is the player that's been subbed out. So both teams have jumped with their subs. Subin on for Tabiner. And Lloyd on for Brandon Jack. Ball doesn't get to Franklin Johnson. Takes it to the line. Just have a look at this for uh, absolute goal from a star midfielder. He's going to go the instantaneous handball. Sees he's covered. Changes his mind. So many times now you see players just handball reflexly and get the ball turned over. That's why Kennedy's a star. Sandalum's free against Derricks. There's some class in that midfield with Fife as well and certainly Mundy. Yeah, and here's Mundy on cue to Ballantyne. And Smith just hammers it over the boundary and they can reset. And a big job for Harry Cunningham, who at the moment has got the job on Stephen Hill. Hill is one of those players, if the Dockers are to win this, he has to start, has to have a major impact. Yeah, Hill, Daniel Pearce, I'm, just, I'm sure Johnson needs to make an impact off half-back as well. Hill, 60-metre bomb. Richards gets back, Pavlich gets back, Clark holds his ground. Rampy trying to cut him down, hands it off just in time. Gee, Neil didn't want to have the shot. Still does. Did a full 360 and misses. Not confident at all. Too many options there, uh, unfortunately, for Lockie Neil. But good to see Zach Clark get into the game. He's been uh, back up Ruckman, but hasn't really touched it much. It was a good contested ball. He won, laid it off for an opportunity. Should have been a goal. And the other bloke in the forward line who uh, really couldn't draw one at the present time is Chris Main, who, you know, he was just about all Australian last year, and he needs to find some footy or find a role. Malczewski to Jetta. 21 points the margin. It was 35 if you just joined us. Fremantle are coming hard. LRT, gang tackle. Going nowhere. Not the first time two Dockers have been all over him in that position of the ground. Johnny Longmire just barking instructions to his, looks like his coaching staff in the, in the coach's box at the moment. Sandlin smashed it, Mazungu. Taken to the line. I like to see the big crunch punch from Sandlands. He's just got such an advantage. He can tee off. Unfortunately, on that occasion, he didn't quite middle the ball. One-on-ones across the ground. No loose man in defence for either team. Kennedy got his arms free to Parker. Slick hands. Kennedy again. McVeigh keeps it alive. Lewis Roberts-Thompson. Good bump by Johnson. Duffield back to Johnson. Good. And there's the open handball, Mazungu. Hunted down, not pushed in the back. Fife turns it over. Roberts Thompson, rampy dumped. Mundy again extracts it, got his arms up. Oh. Ballantyne, a kick of some sort. Travelled three metres, but it might work. Ball comes clear. Parker, well, he tried to push off yeah. on Fife. That's gone. Yeah, good call from the umpire. No doubt he took on the uh, tackler, and great tackle from Fife. Fife has Pierce, who's got a long left leg on him. Or trouble. Pavlich on the move. It's in front. Richards up. Way early. Got to be a free. Against Pav. Gee. Oh, no way. He That's... pulled back into him. and uh, you He's saw... allowed to protect the drop zone. That's a... I may differ, he... Jared. That's a terrible decision. Yeah, he propped to take the mark. You're allowed to do that, surely. It's your decision when you stop. He doesn't have to get out of the road for him. We'll argue about that a little later. Play <laughs> continues. Grundy rolls it to the outer side. Kennedy opens it up. Sure. They could make them pay here. Lloyd, long inside 50 in the first gamer. Didn't quite know what to do there. Big moment for him, though. Johnson. Back to Mazungu. Straight down the middle. Ballantyne overcooked. That's well, twice they've tried to kick it on top of Ballantyne's head. He's... He's, he's little. He's not a big man. <laughs> it's not his go overhead, Mark. It's not his go. I mean, Pavlich is the man. Hit it over his head, let uh, Ballantyne do the legwork. Grundy pleading for an option. One on ones everywhere he looks. Kennedy, that's a good grab. He's had a big game. They pushed Crowley onto him by the looks. Kieran Jack, little chip pass. Franklin, he might be within range. Well and true, he wants to go. He's always within range on this ground, boy. 
Is that 50 still 48 or is it 50 now? I'm not sure about that. I think it is uh, the 50, yeah. but Buddy Franklin, any so any uh, where uh, on the positive side of the centre line is in within range because he can go round blokes willy nilly, take them on with a leg and also uh, with the big boot. We're told this ground is actually two metres longer this year with the redevelopment of the grandstand. So they have lengthened it slightly. Franklin, a couple of skip steps. Got plenty of boot on it. Goal umpire not moving. Mists just to the near side. It has extended over the years because right of screen with that grandstand was extended first. Here's the Pav free kick against. I feel that he had every right to stop because the ball was no longer in front of him, so he wanted to change direction. Oh, so he changed direction. Back pocket. Fans are into it. Sydney looking for their first SCG win of the season. They've come into this. One win, three losses. Season almost on the line, and Fife floats in. Marks in front of Hanabry. Well, it's a big battle now, Hanabry and Fife. Got to learn a few more tricks against Hanabry than uh, just allowing him to get to the front spot, Daniel. Oh, uh, Hanabry. Great hands by Pavlich. And Fife does have a fair bag of tricks. Oh. So Richard slaps it back. Here's the Hanabry Fife battle again. Kept alive. And still alive. Hanabry scoops it up. Man. Brilliant. McVeigh. Short. First game of Lloyd. Not sure how long his leg is. He chips it. Oh, superb. Franklin from 45. And his teammates come from everywhere to uh, pat young Lloyd on the back for that really good pass. Just waited for Buddy to push off his direct opponent, which, as Barry Hall said earlier, he needs to do. Ran back towards the goal square, pushed his Hanabry's effort. Stays in the contest, stays on his feet, quick hands over the top to McVeigh. 15 seconds. That itself was a good kick. This one to Buddy was even better. This one for number four for Franklin. You'll hear the roar from 48. There's a new king in town. It's Lance Franklin. Well, it's an exciting uh, match for Buddy right now. Getting on the scoreboard, clearly they've got to get the job done, got to complete the work. And this game not over by any uh, shakes whatsoever. But this was just one that probably should have gone out. And just a couple of serious tackles. They've been too hard and too tough for them at this stage. 13 minutes to turn that around for the Fremantle Dockers. But Buddy's having a big night. Four goals a couple of weeks ago for Sydney against Adelaide in their only victory for 2014. He's got four today, and they can almost see the finish line. 13 and a half minutes left. 28 points to margin. Five breaks free. Just knocked on the kick. Drags down Bauchewski. Holds it in. Great work right from Nat Fife. He Almost got the launch away, and then it was a uh, mucked-up kick, but he charged in and uh, executed the tackle. And the flick down. DeBoer rolls it inside, 50. Kieran Jack was waiting for it. Lewis Roberts-Thompson on the run. Johnson with him. Both get there, same time. Sutcliffe tried to flick it out. He was jumped on. And now he's in trouble. Plucked from his grasp. Great contest. And well, umpire in the end, you'd think, is Jake Lloyd gets up in the number 44. Been on the rookie list a couple of years. There he is, J-Lo, in the 44. And playing well in his first game as the sub. Is that his nickname or you just give it to him, Pot? I think it's his nickname. OK. Ball on the wing. Clearance has uh, been dominated by the Fremantle Dockers, but as we spoke about pre-game, it hasn't been a strength of the Sydney Swans to scores from stoppages, but they're certainly dominating that aspect of the game today, as with turnovers. Seven goals, six to five, two in favour of uh, Sydney oh, from turnovers. Good tackle by Lloyd, dragging down. Slick hands, Jenner, sizes up the big sticks, burns them all off and nails it! And again, I think it's the uncontested players that have been able to be the difference. The ones that can find space off halfback or the likes of 
Jetta. See, the ball spills out here. Quick handball from Reece Shaw to put Jetta in space. We haven't seen much of that over the past month. Sydney Swans players out by themselves and having the ability at high speed to finish with their good work. Really good finish from Jetta after some good stoppage work. Just working well in congestion and on the outside now, the Sydney Swans there. Uh, after being challenged in that third quarter, the numbers are starting to swing back towards the Swans. Cont uncontested possessions, 24-12, just to reinforce the dominance on the outside in this quarter. Sydney Swans, 12 and a half minutes from their second win of the season, from bringing their season back to life with a first win at the SCG for 2014. John Longmire knows how important this is. They lose today. They'll be 16th at the end of this round if a couple of other results go against them. This is massive. Great mother by Daniel Hanabry there. He's not playing at his absolute best, but he's taken a major step forward today, Lynchy, with uh, 25 possessions and plenty of uh, inside grunt work. That's right. I think he's averaged 18 disposals per game for this season, down from his 26 last year. So right on track to his 2013 form. Neil to Mazungu. Hill. Well played. Kept it in front. Pavlich has to be the man now. They know it. He puts it in the pads direction. He's about to fly. Got a hand on a big hand. Smith with the crumb. Ballantyne hunts it down. Good attack from both players. Malcheski. McVeigh. Laidler. McLean. Just weathering the storm. Yeah, it was great defence from the Swans. Three consecutive handballs backwards. Uh, in some ways, they were blind just knowing that the teammate was there. And then Laidler hit up a target. Laidler heads wide. Jack tracks it down. Got a shepherd from Parker. Goes inboard. Umpire got in the way. Hanabry got it regardless. Back to Richards. Time's in their favour now, and they know it. Bounces it out, and they can reset for a ball in. And it's been a big, a big tackle differential. You see, 84 to 54, and it's it's been frantic from the Sydney Swans, and that's been the difference today. Just the tackle pressure from the Swans. Yeah, it's spot on, and that's is reflected in the numbers. But that's not the total story. It's the pressure and perceived pressure that builds because of those tackle numbers. A little push out, Clark on Pike. So Pavlich not in the ruck at the moment. He's playing forward, and it's cost them. Pike gets under it. Tough one to mark. Fife. Yeah, holding Bird had him by the arm. By the wing. <laughs> wing, yes, he oh, a great aggressive kick. They need to take it on now and they know it. Sutcliffe to Bazungu. Pavlich leading back inside 50. He leads back to the ball. Initially fake to go goal square. Well read. Good play Mazungu to be able to read what Pavlich is trying to do and deliver with a superb kick. Pav needs to kick this one now. He's declared his hand. <laughs> Well, Franklin has four at the other end. Over to the path. He's one of the all-time greats of the competition. In a couple of weeks' time, he could notch up his 300th game and his 600th goal in the same game in a couple of weeks against the Cats. He's been one of the greatest we've ever seen. And on cue, can't quite nail it. On the line, just touched back into play. Well, they blew that, the Dockers. They had Big Sandy take out one player, pushed him under the ball. And he just needed someone backing him up because that ball was going straight through. But there was, I think it was Jeremy Laidler who was just uh, alone on the line. Jack. Oh, oh through his legs. <laughs> Clip the, the leg on the way through. 89 to 55. Huge leapers go up. Umpire's found a push free. Fremantle ball. It's 33 points the margin right now. The biggest margin of the game oh, was 35. De Boer. He's missed them. The players inside forward 50 free. Free, free kick. kick off the ball. 50 against McGlynn. Okay, so this will bring De Boer. He was about 12 metres outside the 50, so he won't be directly in front. He'll still be just outside the square and on an angle. Had the free kick and 50 taken him inside the square, he would have been directly out in front. But still. A goal he should kick. Nine and a half minutes left, and they're still alive. And they're hanging on the Fremantle Dockers. 
I've just noticed Chris Main coming on for his first run in this last quarter, giving Johnson a rest. Here's the 50 as he just comes around. Over the mark. Jumped over the mark. The umpire spot on. Good decision from the umpire. But he wouldn't be the first in a half forward or bloke who plays that high mid-range forward uh, position to get lost on this SCG. Chris Main. There's plenty of better players gone kickless and goalless as centre-half forwards on this ground. No doubt it's a unique uh, ground to play on, Jared. Those wide wings, uh, extremely different to uh, Patterson Stadium in Perth, which is the polar opposite. Long ground, very na narrow wings, and when you're looking for spaces of forward, you can easily get stuck out on that far wing, which is pretty much 110 metres from goal. Pavlich long knock to Hill. Straight out of the playbook, that one. Towards the pocket, Laidler. And that's almost on the fall. Just clipped Crowley's foot and out of play. Yeah, there's a nice little uh, pop tap to Stephen Hill from Sandy. Big Sandlands using the space pretty well uh, over the last few weeks. Let's have another look. There it is, out in the space. Didn't quite get hold of it. Well, oh, great tap that one. Ballantyne hammers it inside 50. Crowley. They still sense they're in it, Fremantle. They're still fighting hard. Clancy Pierce flicked back. Ballantyne. He's got the kick away. It's a roller. A tumbler. <laughs> They've got a couple in a row. <laughs> and they're those clearances that can mean the difference. Clement centre clearance. Sanderlands to Hill. Get the ball forward. And then another clearance. This time just a junk ball, but a couple of mids. He got clubbed as he kicked it as well from uh, <laughs> Kieran Jack, but uh, got it on the boot and had the very favourable end over end bounce and just missed that right post, snuck through for a goal. Still a sneaky chance. Barry Hall, what's the momentum feel like right now down there? Oh, look, it's tight and tough, we know that, boys, but I think Freeman and the coach, Ross Lyons, has, has made a really good move. Michael Johnson's gone forward. I'd really try and isolate him and Matthew Pavich, who's red hot at the moment. I'd try and isolate them. They've got to play on, they've got to get the inside 50. Instead of trying to save this game, they've got to try and win it. Don't worry about leaking scores. Let's try and score ourselves. Chris Main's a defender. He's got uh, Jetta back there. so an unusual position for Main. So Fife playing out of the goal square now for Fremantle. Ballantyne clips it. Hill pokes it up. Fife at the back. Pavlich got to the back. And they've got three in three minutes. Well, they're the match winners. It was Sandlands again to Hill. When Hill gets it, he generally makes good decisions. This one wasn't quite pure, but it gave Pavlich the advantage. Great stuff on Valentine again. But it gets the ball outside that congestion so the players can run into space. That's what you want to do. And from a ruck point of view, great tactic. Get it over the congestion as Ben McGuinn gets a finger in the eye and goes to ground. But over the back, Pav too quick. Great goal, important goal. Brings the margin back to 15 points, and they're clearing the congestion at the moment, Frio, and that's where they're hurting the Sydney Swans, on the outside. Three goals in eight minutes. That is very doable. Back in the middle, Sandlin's dominating the ruck, and he yeah. thumps it. That's as good as a kick. Well read by Smith. Got there first. No one to go to. Pike tries to trap it in there. Stolen by Neal. Couldn't quite break free. Kennedy holds him up and gets it off. McLean. Hanabry, they find the space. Jack, a little floater. Dawson, little nudge. Umpires put the whistle away. Main, Crowley, Sandilands. Back inside to Main. Got his arms free, turned it over. Parker in board. Stolen back by Daniel Pierce. Just bangs it long. He knows he's got the numbers down there. Oh, he's Spur dropped. left it behind. It's tough for everyone in the kitchen right now. The heat's right on. Fife. Scoop the handball out. Johnson dragged down, didn't have it. Umpires have put the whistle away. They found it. Which way is this going? Sydney free. Ooh. Well, Johnson very stiff there. Doc is very stiff. They've plucked one uh, from the umpire that wasn't officiating. Parker. Good collect. Jeez, that was frenetic. Three kicks in it. Cunningham on the wing. Seven minutes left and counting. Stay. 
They played a draw here last year, these two. Sandilands in defence. Arms on it. Couldn't quite. Main dumped. Good tackle, Hanabry. He rolled him in the tackle. And the umpire will have to sort this out, surely. Hit outs in favour of Freo, 14 2, which is not overly surprising, but clearance is 10 5. Here's the free kick. It's gone in favour of Kennedy. Just a high tackle from Pierce, just the arm across the shoulder. Neil almost threaded his way through. <laughs> McLean got the throw. Is that on the full? It is. Free kick, Fremantle. Now, will they go open side here quickly? Duffield's running for McFarlane. We've got the overlap. Oh, gee, the umpire's told him to go back up behind the mark. Well, that's, that's cost them a, a valuable overlap run off deep defence. Forced him to go to the congested side. Clark up. Couldn't quite. Jack pops on inside 50 in hope. Kennedy tries to spin away. Got his arms clear. Flicked it back. McVeigh, captain today, to the pocket. Jetta. He's quick, but not quite that quick. Sandlands uh, just screaming out that he wants somebody else to take this. Zach Clark, he said. He said, get up there, I'm not going to get anywhere near that. He's worn out. They just can't kill Fremantle off. Fremantle hanging in there. McLean gave it up. Jetta from the pocket. It's a bomb. Goal square. It won't score. It's knocked through. Well, behind the bonus, really, for the Dockers, they get possession. Will they go down the middle? Because they haven't got time to just muck around with possession footy. They've got to get some direction. Three goals in six minutes now, the equation. And there you go, straight down the middle. Clark, Sandlin's the knock-on. And it works. Pavlic read it beautifully. He needs a handball option. Flicks it up to Bohr. Mazungu, no one's in the goal square. Oh. Tried to roll it forward. Jack. Smith. And now Hanabry can run. Time in their favour. Long to Franklin. McFarlane. Franklin. It's been a superb battle. Down to Clancy Pierce. Crowd thought Franklin deserved a free. Pierce tucked against the boundary. Swans had the numbers. Jack. Got to keep running the Dockers. They're just starting to flag a little bit here, Lynchy. They are, and just missing some open players as well. Pike goes up. Not quite. Kennedy crumbs it. Jetta's getting out the back here. Hanabry. Franklin, just beyond his range. Well, a huge opportunity missed by the Dockers. Sandlands was uh, brilliant, albeit predictable. He knocked the ball long. Pavlich gets it, and then they butcher two opportunities to go forward. Getting it forward into the goal square and across the line would have been far better than a turnover mm. midfield. Well, taking 30 seconds off the clock here, almost as good as a goal. He's been, a, he's been uh, just such a good player today, Josh Kennedy. He's had 37 possessions. He's kicked a goal. He's set up half a dozen others. And he might just finish it. Played like a centre-half forward there. Just led across beautifully. Tough kick. But he is a star. From the 50. Hits it well. Can't kill him off. There's still three kicks from the lead. 17 points. The behind, in essence, doesn't matter. Well, this time Sandlands has come to the other side of the ground. They're not going to telegraph the move oh. down the middle. They've done it anyway. <laughs> Only just. Main to Dawson. Back to Main to the open side. Neil to set it all up. Short to Pierce. Made the ground. They don't know how long left. They look at the scoreboard. There's 25 gone. Long bomb, Pavlich down there, Johnson down there, Lewis Roberts Thompson, not quite the second grab. Mazungu tries to break free. Pavlich tries to lay the tackle. Hill out of nowhere. Out on the full. One point. Just snuck through just for a minor. Squeezed in. So just got to get a zone in place. And Sydney need to soak up the the atmosphere, the pressure hit targets, control the tempo of the game. They've met every challenge so far this afternoon in the Swans. Pike comes hard. Three kicks, three minutes 44. John Longmire, edge of his seat. The whole box on edge. Their season's on edge. They're one and three coming into this. That could be 16th at the end of the round if they go down. Neil flicks it up. The Sydney Swan chant rings around the SCG. One more in their home. They know it. The crowd know it. 
Bird dragged down, jumped on. Neil flicks it up, and Duffield thought about taking it out. Caught by Rampy. That could be ball. You bet it is. Well, there's about three throws in the middle of it. They were both handoffs, and I think the players are looking for the boundary line. They're a bit confused. I think the dock is expecting the Pain's whistle to be blown. Him. Throw in, they're going to pay yeah, here. It exactly well, was a throw in because it looked like it. The, dot, the players were playing like yeah. it was, uh, they were waiting for the call. Well, a few seconds went off the clock there yeah. as they tried to decide what was going on. They can't put them on. They're gone. Sandlins, big smash forward. Clark read it well, but he left it behind. Shaw, the sidestep, hammers it wide. More seconds tick down. Duffy will get back. Bird will ride him to the line. Two minutes, 54 left. It's an area of the game that uh, Zach Clark's got to get better at. It was a low ball coming in. They're talking premierships. They're talking grand final appearances, the Dockers. They've got a standard that they've got to meet, and they've got to get better if they're to go one better. He's one player that's got some issues, got great strengths in the air. Good tap, Ruckman. But ground ball he needs to get better at. Back into play. Sandlin's the key, and he's wrapped up. Still a chance, the Dockers. He's had a huge last quarter, Sam Leeds. Worked hard. He's had a good season. Yep. He'd have a lot of Brownlow votes, Dwayne. I reckon in the first two weeks, uh, he would have been racking up a couple. They all had a bad third week, and they all had a good fourth week. <laughs> yeah. And it opens up, strangely enough. Sydney left the corridor free. And McFarlane, he gave him 10 metres on the mark Still attempt. The players loose everywhere, actually, Frio. Sydney dropped right back deep. Duffield squeezes Great wide kick. to Johnson. Same well, this is bizarre. It? Exactly the same spot that he kicked a goal last year to give them a chance at a win. It's a nightmare. Actually, Sydney just dropped far too Anybody. far back defensively and just allowed too many short, uncontested passes up the field. He kicks this. The margin will be 10 points with two minutes left. The game almost hinges on this. It's across the face. Pavs up, slapped away. The crumb, Dawson, unlikely hero. Clark the fumble. Hanabry, but Johnson's waiting for it. He's up. And knocked away from him by Jack. Crowley to the line. Taken out, ball in. We're down to one minute 51, and the crowd are into it. Everybody knows how important this and this is. The Swan season momentum hinges on it. They haven't won at the SCG yet this year. And they won't be back here for five weeks. Sandlins knocks it down. Cunningham tries to hack it clear. Daniel Pierce. Hill. Sandlins. Not 15. Neil turns it over. Jack hammers it wide. Franklin, if he gathers this, he's got no one to go to. Looks up. There's not a soul home. He's got the first gamer. Jake Lloyd. Open goal if he gets there. Takes it out, not a bad move. Well worked, J-Lo, ball in, 121 left, and the Swans are home. Good pace from Lloyd as well, Great Buddy. Pace. Good kick, put it out in front of his uh, rookie teammate, and now the ball's 160 metres from the Fremantle goals. That was a lot better than a behind. Ball knocked down, Hanabry. Lloyd under it, knocked down to ground. Fremantle still trying their hearts out. Subin the chip kick. Pavlich turns around. Back to Subin. Got to go possession. No one forward of the ball, but they've still got to somehow take it forward with hands. Great tackle. Pierce dragged down, and that will do. Lloyd, Rampy. Swans fans know. This is a huge win for the Sydney Swans. Jetta. Oh, a kick. Superb pass to McGlynn who can put a big exclamation mark on what's going to be their best win of the season. See, that was a good kick from Jetta. Good turnover. Again, the pressure on the Fremantle ball carrier was really good, but uh, in defence, I think it was Pierce running through the middle. He had no one to kick to whatsoever. Didn't get great support uh, around him, but uh, a couple Jetta times finish. in this turn, though, and yeah. they've butchered it. Yeah. It's something they need to address going uh, into the depth of the season. Just clips to the inside of the post, but it won't matter. Good crowd in here at the SCG today. The Swans have been under some pressure. Their coach has been under pressure. Franklin's been under pressure. 
But right now, they are back in the reckoning for 2014. The Swans, the fans fell in love with, are back at the SCG. Met every challenge under almost unbelievable pressure at times. And they were strong enough to get home in the end by 17 points. Great effort from the Sydney Swans and we saw the effort was certainly there in the first term. Didn't have all the class that we, uh, we've recognised over the last few years, but the effort was certainly there and the class came with time. Uh, we spoke about uh, score sources pre-game, how they dropped away from their scores from stoppages. They've been able to turn that around. Last year they were plus 15 and ranked second in the competition. Tonight they were plus 12, so 6-6 six, six from stoppages. So that was a really valuable turnaround. But it all came with the effort, the tackling pressure. Their contested players in and around the ball got on top and importantly, the uncontested work, the players on the outside, and that was Mel, Chas Mel Chesky, uh, Reece Shaw off half back as well, Jenna, as we saw, got on the outside as well. So some real good times from a Sydney point of view. Uh, the effort was there for uh, the Fremantle Dockers, but uh, not at the level they'd be very happy with, and they just turned the ball over far too much. Yeah, they crowded some opportunities to get themselves back into the game, but just couldn't get the flow going enough. Had some issues with the uh, Test the ball going into the forward line where they had some spare players, nobody deep. But uh, they just unfortunately met an immovable force. Barry Hall is with one of the stars of the day. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Well, in the course of the season, this is a pretty important win for the club. Uh, absolutely massive game for, for the footy club. And, oh, they're a quality outfit, Frio. And um, the boys, great. We, fought, we had to fight, fight hard. Um, and we came out with a win today, which was unbelievable experience. And the crowd here tonight was unbelievable. It's just great to be a part of the footy club at the moment. And you, yourself, you're starting to look a bit more comfortable with the footy club. You started to kick a few goals in the end and starting to learn how to play the SOG. Yeah, I'm not judging my game on goals. I think a lot of people do, but I'm just judging my game. I'm playing my role for the football club. And if goals come, they come. But I'm just here to play and, and win games of football. And today, we were lucky enough to get over the line. And um, yeah, we just take one game at a time and see what happens. And yourself, you're probably the most scrutinised player in the game at the moment. Did you expect to have so much scrutiny in Sydney? Ah, oh, not at all, mate. It is what it is. Just get on with it and play football. One out tonight. Two seven. That's one man who had plenty of scrutiny to another man who's now gotten scrutiny, Barry Hall and Lance Franklin. That's well, right. I don't think anybody minds scrutiny uh, when you play a match-winning performance like that from uh, Buddy Franklin. But uh, just on his performance tonight, Lynch, I still think he looks like, from an energy perspective, he's much better off playing uh, a deep forward. I don't think he's got the capacity at the moment to be charging up and down the middle of the ground. They've got to leave that to blokes like Josh Kennedy. And he was, if no one else, best on ground. Yeah, thanks, boys. Well, a fantastic performance, especially the midfield. They're probably under a bit of heat during the week, but they certainly responded today. Yeah, I think... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Still keep getting positioned. Back at a good game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it's been a pretty solid week. Obviously, um, we didn't perform the way we liked last week, and we were under pressure. And that's rightfully so. We deserved, we deserved to be in the position we were in, and... Uh, you know, we really stuck to our guns this week, and it was good that we were able to put a four-quarter performance together. And as much public size, you had some pretty long meetings during the week. What, what were they all about? Oh, it's just about trying to strip it back and, um, you know, if working towards what we want to stand for as a footy club and, and getting back to what's, what made us so good over the last two years, three years. Great performance by the Sydney Swans. Jono, really, it was the Sydney that we've come to know and respect in recent years. Yeah, they were very, very good. Their, their third quarter was uh, was what set up the victory. It was a tough first half, of course, and uh, their, their second quarter started to get the edge, but the, to maintain that after half-time is where they uh, where they really excelled, and, uh, and good luck to them. They needed that big victory tonight. 17 points the margin, but uh, the Dockers, to their credit, did come at them. Uh, they got the lead out to 35 points at one stage. We knew the Dockers would come back, but uh, just run out of time in the end. Well, they did, and uh, and exactly right. It was, a, it was a good last quarter. The energy started was, to it? build started <laughs> to build around uh, around everything. And we, we had a couple of spotlights before the game, and one of the reasons Fremantle were able to get back into it was because of the work of Michael Johnson. His first half wasn't as good, wasn't able to get uh, become the plus one as often as Fremantle would, would like. It was Duffield on, on those occasions, but he kicked two goals in the third quarter, had 18 disposals for the game and, and would see that as a positive. But overall, it was the Swans midfield as the, the second spotlight. 
as a group, they hadn't, uh, hadn't put a game together. Individually, they'd had their moments throughout this season. But as a group, finally, they were able to put it together, Sandy. But I did have a spotlight, a third spotlight, Sandy. And before the game, you did tip the Sydney Swans to win by 17. There it is I on did. screen. I did. Congratulations. Yes. Mate, wow. Jono, <laughs> it's like racehorses. Crystal ball stuff. <laughs> no, every now and again, <laughs> one will get you over the line <laughs> and you win. But uh, I just had a feeling it was going to be a pretty tight affair. And I thought the real Sydney mm. would stand yep. up. Let's have a look at uh, some of the highlights of the game. Buddy and McFarlane, well, we knew this was going to be a fantastic contest. And uh, Buddy at last really coming to the fore. McFarlane took the points in the first half. Buddy was only going at 17% by foot. But after half time, he kicked three goals and had a major say in why Sydney Swans were able to win this game. And the small forwards uh, of Sydney, particularly in that second quarter, Buddy incidentally finished with... He finished with four. four. Yeah, he had the six shots at goal. So he, uh, he, he had his opportunities tonight. And at Fally's way, Barry Hall was talking about the fact he had to go a bit deeper at the SCG. Similar way Barry used to play up there on a regular basis. He did that and was able to have an impact. You mentioned the small forwards, yeah. Sandy. Here they are in the third quarter. McGlynn had an excellent game, 24 and a couple of goals. Uh, Luke Parker was also very solid on the night as well, and he kicked an important goal in the third quarter. And Brandon Jack was the third one here. Look, could have been called for a free kick, just dragged away Sutcliffe there, but keep your feet and you get the result. Brandon Jack, a big goal for the Swans. Uh, Dwayne was talking about heat in the kitchen during mm. the call, and uh, I get the feeling when we look at this next <laughs> bit of footage that uh, a piece of material from the kitchen <laughs> yes. was used. Well, Derek's there with the big head coach. The towel is gone, and... There's the head clash there with Jetta, but it's now the Chuck Super Whites that the Sydney Swans have brought out. This is the $100 million <laughs> Look at there, it is there. sport that the we're involved The good thing about in. that, you just rinse it out go again. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. What have we come to? I don't know. Next fall for these two sides, let's have a look at it. Sydney have Melbourne <laughs> next week at the MCG. And you can see following that, Brisbane, Hawthorne and Essendon. And as far as... The Dockers are concerned. They've got North Melbourne at home, so the Kangas travelling, mm. and uh, that's not going to be easy for them. Followed by West Coast, Port Adelaide, Ooh, and Geelong. Freeman, that's that's very very solid. They'd like to get the North Melbourne one because after that, it's uh, it's tough going for the Fremantle Dockers. Now you've got some headlines for us, I trust. I have. Kurt Tippett is the first one. He returned today for the Sydney Swans reserves. He had an uh, encouraging return to football. Kicked three goals in 40 minutes and took 10 marks to match, so not far away from a return for Kurt Tippett. And some good news for North Melbourne, Mad Jack Daw kicked five goals in the VFL for Werribee uh, for some positive news for Brad Scott. And Sam Fisher, well he will return as well soon for St Kilda, he got through his first appearance as well, so that was fantastic for Sam Fisher, he'll join us uh, very shortly as well on the phone, we look forward to catching up and having a chat to Sam Fisher, seeing how he went uh, in today's game. And interestingly enough, Brian Lake Mm. Did this come as a shock to you? It has. Has been left out of the Hawks lineup. So obviously looking for Brian to just get uh, another game under his belt. Yep. Uh, he hasn't played obviously for a few weeks. Played last week. We'll play again this week. Probably and give you another won't, one. Won't be too long no, before no, no, before he's be back, back in that lineup. But definitely out this week. That's right. And Taylor Walker as well is the is the other one. So we'll chat to Taylor Walker tomorrow. I'm at uh, Adelaide Oval for Adelaide versus the Giants. So at half time we'll have a chat to Taylor Walker and be good to catch up with Taylor just to see where he's at in his recovery. He's not too far away as well from a return to AFL footy. Don't forget the Easter eggs before you leave uh, Adelaide. Don't worry, I'll load up on the plane. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, we're all looking forward to Monday too here at Fox Footy. It is going to be as it has been in the past now for a number of years.